Hi friends, welcome back. So we've got a comment coming in from someone from our community just eight hours ago. Uh, this is from Jabo Kit. They write, Hey Chris, laughy face, laughy face, laughy face. You are a clown. Don't you think your embarrassment fetish is a bit much? Shut it down and quit while you're behind, bro. Seriously, you've got to be kidding, right? Clown face. And I want to go into this stuff because essentially this captures the challenges that we face these days with online social media, be it uh, finance stuff, news stuff, economic stuff, political stuff, etc. Um, what to believe anymore. And you got it filled with these sort of basically trolley type of comments. And unfortunately, this is how our system goes. Uh, Musk and Trump, internet troll number one and internet troll number two, and you can decide which is which, uh, are manipulating the system to make these kind of statements pervasive, right? Uh, if you don't go with them, you are a clown, right? You're, you're embarrassing, etc. And um, when you look into sort of where these comments come from, this particular one um, was a comment from the account of Ben Ashton, uh, joined on April 5th, 2024, so just a few months ago. So it's a new account. And when you Google the name Ben Ashton, you come up with a British actor and writer. So I highly doubt that this is the uh, particular user's you know real identity. Um, I want to start with this because it, it captures the importance of basically truth in, in media and sort of what we do on the channel is try to help you guys navigate this crazy world um, is false advertising, right? Uh, talking about Tesla, looks like they're doing it yet again. Um, they were just warned, this is just yesterday. Uh, US agency says Tesla's public statements imply that its vehicles can drive themselves. They can't, right? And they're putting out these social media posts and other headlines. Tesla's social media posts falsely implied that its cars are robot taxis and it's a TSA warns, right? So um, that's the question I pose, guys, is do you want uh, companies to be able to just falsely advertise, say that their products are better than what they are, say their products can do things that they can't, and is that something that, is, that we want in our financial markets? Uh, it is a major, major problem because uh, essentially, if, if you can buy government influence, you can basically say whatever you want. Um, this is on November 5th, 2024. Again, the NHTSA, so this is the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration, right? Uh, they sent a letter to Tesla. You can see it here. It was to the Director of Field Quality. And basically, they're saying, yo, you know, you're putting out these social media posts, making all these, you know, false claims. And uh, this is some of the text of the letter. It says, this investigation will focus on the adequacy of FSD, so that's false self-driving, or Tesla's robot driving, ability to perform in reduced visibility conditions stemming from relatively common traffic occurrences such as sun glare, fog, and airborne dust in the wake of four crashes reported under the Standing General Order, right, 2021-01. So um, basically, guys, and it says also says here, one resulted in a fatality, uh, means someone died. Um, basically, we're talking about products that are falsely advertised. People do get killed, and we're talking about, again, like, these are just common operation of, of said vehicles. Um, I have a real problem with this stuff of companies falsely advertising what their products can do. And also I have a major problem with stock promoters, which they're paid by Mr. Musk, right? Through various platforms, be it uh, Twitter or other methods. And I say other methods because a lot of his stock promoters have t-shirt sales, stuff like that. So if Musk wants to go in and buy a bunch of t-shirts to his stock promoters, he can. Um, and if you're curious, a lot of these stock promoters uh, get paid around six figures a year or more. You know, I don't know their exact numbers, uh, to promote these sort of Tesla false statements. Um, it is a major, major problem. Now, I want to show you guys this kind of stuff too. And, and you have to put this all together to understand the kind of system that, that we're in. Um, this is Musk just tweeting a couple days ago um, a thing from the Babylon B. Now, if you don't know, the Babylon D, uh, B is basically fake news, but their headlines, right, if, if you're not paying attention, you may think it's real. So this is Musk, Laffy Face, Democrats call for the abolishing a popular vote, right? So just a day ago, and, and you know he does this stuff quite frequently. Here's another one. Um, again, Elon Musk laughy face just a couple days ago. Democrats remind everyone a winner may not be declared until 100%, 110% of the vote is counted. And again, this is just completely fake news. This is the kind of stuff that uh, Musk tweets out. Now, when I was uh, um, younger, you guys may not know this, I used to live next door to The Onion. True story, our office was, was next to my uh, place. And um, essentially, uh, the Onion was again. This is all fake news, but it was it was funny, uh, funny in the sense of like completely fake. Uh, like for example, new dating site suggests people you already know, uh, but thought were too good for you, right? And it's it's like completely jokes. The issue is that when Elon Musk tweets out stuff from the Babylon Bee, and for his followers who believe in conspiracy theories, these kind of things of you know uh, Democrats doing this, Democrats doing that, these kind of headlines, even though this this whole website, the Babylon Bee, is, is all basically jokes, but 
it's close enough to believability that people will buy whatever these stuff says. So already I'm sure there are people who are Musk fans say, oh, see, Chris, this is completely real, stuff like that. But the, the way Musk defends basically tweeting out a bunch of false stuff is saying, oh, it, it, don't, don't you have a sense of humor? Don't you like funny things? But this goes back to understanding that for, and, and we're just talking about his particular company, if, if I can then have this freedom to tweet out whatever I want, then I can tweet out things that are more, you know, beneficial financially by saying, hey, my cars are better than they are and you can't touch me government. Uh, Musk is also tweeting out stuff from Trump and I wanna play from some of it for you so you have to understand what we're talking about here. Have a listen. They have collaborated to suppress vital information on everything from elections to public health. The censorship cartel must be dismantled and destroyed and it must happen immediately. And here's my plan. First, within hours of my inauguration, I will sign an executive order banning any federal department or agency from colluding with any organization, business, or person to censor, limit, categorize, or impede the lawful speech of American citizens. I will then ban federal money from being used to label domestic speech as mis- or disinformation. And I will begin... Okay, so that's the key right there, guys, is essentially Musk and Trump want to create a world where there is no, quote, misinformation or disinformation, meaning that if I want to tweet out things about my products that aren't true, the government can't come in and say, hey, they aren't true. Do, do you understand? Like, like, like if you uh, basically uh, gut our regulatory uh, you know, parts of the government, you can do basically whatever you want. And, and this is a, a major, major issue for consumers. It's a major issue for democracy. It's a major issue for our whole entire system. And moreover, when you're receiving money from, you know, we'll, we'll just say um, not nice sources and you don't know where this money is coming from, they can promote any particular messages that they want. This stuff is, is, is really dangerous. That's why I go through this all the time. Um, I understand, guys. I completely get it. Uh, if you're in Tesla stock and you're a big fan of Elon Musk, you're like, but Chris, my, my stock is going to the moon, right? Elon Musk is taking control of the system and the government. And, and then, you know, these Tesla robots, they're going to make us tons and tons of cash. But that is inherently the, the problem with our with our system, right? Elon Musk can make claims about all his products and how you're all going to have robots. And, I, and they are making claims about robots. It's crazy. Um, and the stock goes up because we can't actually enforce anything about their claims. Now, I just want to be clear on these things is that all this stuff is that, that they keep pumping is all based on BS. And eventually reality catches up with you. You know, how soon, who knows? But I just want to show you guys what's going on. And I also want to throw this into perspective. Um, you know, it, it's it's not just Tesla. Um, just for example, and I'm bringing up Linus Tech Tips here. I used to like these guys. I, I've watched them for years. These days, I don't really like them, just to be perfectly frank. But here's an example. So let's say uh, Apple comes out with a you know new product. And they say, hey, you know, our product, our phone can have like eight hours of battery life. Now, as a customer, as a consumer, right, you want to, you know, check, is that is that real before you buy the phone? And so generally speaking, in the past, they used to go to whatever my favorite YouTube channel, this is an example of one, and, and they would run tests and they'd say, hey, this is the actual battery life in real world testing. Um, it turns out like something like a Linus Tech Tip maybe isn't so reliable anymore, maybe they're are just you know repeating the company line and um there was another youtube channel that called them out and i'm just using this one as an example um we're in a similar situation a similar world to where like i'll call out other youtubers that say guys it looks like they're giving you false info but then you have their fans or their troll accounts you, you don't know because this could be one of the youtubers troll accounts for all we know who knows um and then writing this stuff saying oh chris you're an embarrassment and you must enjoy being an embarrassment being a loser that kind of thing and guys i i, I can see i can see your stock is going up but I just want people to understand what this stuff is based on and sort of why you need to pay attention to these kind of things. Um, but it goes beyond just, you know, FSD and false advertising there. Um, you're talking about something like this. This was an interesting that just came out a couple of days ago about uh, AI and power plants. Um, for all of these, you know, companies that are running on the AI hype, they're going to actually need power to run it. And uh, one of the things that's fascinating about this is they were talking about, you know, when should governments come in and, or the government, I guess you say, uh, come in and regulate this kind of stuff. And the argument they make is, you know, if uh, Nvidia gets, you know, charged higher prices for, you know, paying power, we don't really care. But if suddenly, you know, your grandma gets higher electric uh, bills because of all these AI, you know, companies using up all the electricity in the neighborhood, then they suddenly have to care. 
However, you know, in the case of say something like Elon Musk, as you guys told you about in Memphis, um, he's essentially going to be sucking up the power of a hundred thousand homes there for his, you know, AI thing. And what if you're, you know, living in a poor neighborhood and you don't have any power, you have blackouts? Well, tough luck. And what if you try to go after Musk? Well, again, tough luck because he's got that government on his side. Uh, in my particular opinion, you know, I want a government that's independent from, you know, money, from corporate uh, money and these kind of things. But, you know, I, I, I guess I'm just some sort of crazy idealist. Um, here's another example. And, and someone made a comment um, just a, the other day. It was like, Chris, you know, you don't know anything about Tesla. You've never driven one. You're so dumb. And that's actually not true. I, I have driven the Teslas. And I've actually experienced this problem for myself. So you can find this old article. This was just from last year. It says, Tesla created secret team to suppress thousands of driving range complaints. Basically, when my experience of driving the Tesla was that the range of the thing would change. It, it was really odd. And basically, this is not a mistake. This is actually by design. Um, Elon Musk wants to sort of aggressively overplay how far their cars can go. And so while you're driving it, for example, it might show you have you know 300 miles of range, and then you drive it for, we'll say, in half an hour, and then suddenly it suddenly drops to like, you know, 200 miles. You're like, what the heck? Where'd my, <laughs> where'd my range go? But again, um, the, the idea is that Musk wanted to show that, uh, you know, aggressively false marketing or, you know, false use of the, um, you know, vehicle that your range was greater than what it was. So it was overplaying these kind of things. Um, and you have to fall. You have to follow this stuff because our world is so crazy to navigate. Um, here's another thing, and, and again, it's it's all related, guys. It's all related and connected. Um, it depends what kind of world you want to live in. So this was a headline that just came out yesterday. Uh, Trump holds up transition process over ethics code. Right, we're talking about ethics and, and government, and again, it relates to to business also. Um, this particular issue is that when you switch administrations, so we're going from the Biden administration to the Trump administration. Um, the coming administrations would be the Trump in this situation. Uh, generally speaking, you make statements, you sign a bunch of documents, etc., saying, "Hey, this is how we're going to get rid of conflicts of interest." Conflicts of interest being like, "Hey, if you're Mr. Trump and you have a hotel owned by you, and you decide you want official government business at your hotel, and you profit from said." business, right? And also too, you can have lots of foreigners come in and out and who knows where said money's coming in. Um, it, it, it really is that, that egregious. Um, they were saying here during Trump's administration that they had like 3,400 conflicts of interest. Um, that's from the citizens for responsibility and ethics. And I understand guys, if you're a fan of Trump and you're a fan of that side of, of the aisle, you say, oh, this is just the media attacking Trump. They're just so mean to Mr. Trump. And, and it's hard to argue with that logic. Um, or, or they'll just say, oh, well, you know, Kamala's such a dummy and I had to vote for Trump. I mean, it's, it's just, all I can do is just tell you guys what's going on and, and, and what I see. So I, I just try my best. But unfortunately, we, we will have this stuff again. I, I honestly didn't think we would see this kind of, you know, problems <laughs> again. I, I thought I was, well, I was, I guess, uh, silly, I was silly me hoping that we would move past these kind of conflicts of interest issues with our, our politicians. But we're probably in for another four years of it. Uh, I want to uh, read this part to you, which, which I didn't even know. It uh, says here, a particular note Mr. Rasson said was the fact that Mr. Trump's transition team blew past the September 1st deadline. So you're again, you're supposed to go through a proper transition team, pass the security clearance things, and you actually can't have any of these security documents or go to any of these meetings unless you pass all of these clearances. That's how it normally works. Uh, but the Trump people are just completely ignoring it. And this gives a reason why they might be. Um, so again, they have a September 1st deadline to sign the agreement with the General Service Administration. That document provides for a variety of services to be made available to the president-elect, including, this is the important part, $7.2 million in funding for the cost of transition. But it also puts a 5000 cap on individual donations to the transition and requires public disclosure of all its donors. By refusing to sign that agreement, Mr. Trump effectively faces no limits on contributions and does not need to name its donors publicly. Money raised by the transition is not regulated by any other government agency. So again, this this sort of system uh, makes it right for corruption and, and I, normally for uh, you know <laughs> say I I can't give exact percentage. We'll just say uh, an upstanding you know politician uh, and 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 guys I understand there's some people out there that think all politicians are absolutely corrupt, but there's there's different levels of it. Um, you know, again, if you want security clearances, there's certain protocols. If you want to avoid conflicts of interest, again, there's certain protocols, but Trump just ignores all this kind of stuff. Uh, and also he has immunity, unfortunately. Um, this was the uh, court case on, was it argued on April 25th, 2024, so recently decided on July 1st, 2024, saying that basically Trump has immunity. 
uh, of any kind of official presidential business. What is official? What's a not official? Depends who you ask. Trump can say everything he does is official, and then therefore you can't sue him or hold him accountable for anything. It is a major, major problem. Uh, I also want to bring this up too. <laughs> it gets more crazy. Um, I, I keep mentioning this stuff. For any other candidate, any other politician, it's not candidate, we'll just say any other president, this would be a major corruption scandal. You know, his family's got this crypto coin thing. Uh, normally when you step into office, you need to like not have conflicts of interest. So you, you, you know, remove yourself from control of your business and things like that. And, and the idea is that a politician shouldn't be passing laws that benefits themselves financially, right? That's, that's the idea. But with the Trump people, again, they're, they're just right now, they're ignoring any of these kind of conflicts of interest statements or ignoring any kind of protocol for, you know, having access to uh, sensitive materials and, and high security clearance stuff. And they're just doing whatever they want. And, you know, the, the question is like, what kind of promises uh, have they made to the crypto industry and, and where we go from here? I, I, I it's hard to talk about stuff. It's frustrating because it, it's to, to me, the, the, the level of corruption is so obvious, but again, to his supporters, they just think you're just making stuff up and you just don't, you just don't like him because you don't like freedom of speech. That's the arguments that they make. But I, I, that's why I try to start this stuff with, you know, think about if a company falsely advertises their products, do you want to live in that world or not? Or another way to put it, um, say on YouTube, if a stock promoter paid for the, by the company makes basically false or misleading statements about said company to get you to buy said equity, do you want enforcement on those kind of things, right? It is a major problem um, because the government is likely going to get weaker in terms of regulations. This is sort of why I have to cover this stuff even more, but I understand it. it's not popular. And then I, and I get trolled by, you know, whatever saying, oh, Chris, you're so dumb. My crypto and my, you know, meme stocks are going to the moon and you're just too stupid. And it's like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it depends on what world you want to live in. Um, this is sort of why I brought up this this uh, you know movie poster of a, a Bitcoin guys. If you haven't seen this, check it out. It shows a behind the scenes look at how corrupt companies operate, what they say behind the scenes, what their phone calls are, and I just recommend you see it. it it'll give you a, a light into the uh, sort of darkness that that you may or may not know about. Um, and I also want to bring this up. Um, someone mentioned before, which I talked about this uh, yesterday in the last video, um, this regarding the Rybert uh, Lighthizer. So. Um, there was talk that he may or may not be our trade policy person coming in, and essentially we're talking about um, you know increased tariffs. Now, someone pointed out that there was a, there was a conflicting report, which I actually looked into, uh, saying that maybe he's not going to be our trade person. Now, this is the issue of of the the news cycle and why you have to read everything. Um, in the report, it just said there was talk that he could do it, but he's also interested in treasurer. He's interested in commerce, like he may be any number of the cabinet positions. Uh, this particular one just said. Um, you know, that's BS, but that was from one person and the other, and the other one was saying that was from multiple sources. Now they, both of these stories can be completely true. It's a, depending on who you ask. And this particular story also isn't like set in stone. It wasn't, the story wasn't about, is he exactly appointed? Is he going to, you know, uh, be this particular position? It's just that there's been talk on these kind of things and that's sort of the direction that, that they're going, but all this stuff is in flux. The thing is I want to mention though, is when you have conflicting reports about whether or not this particular person was at Lighthizer is going to, you know, assume an important role in the government. It just shows that even within, you know, their circles, they're also infighting about who's going to seize what power. And again, it's, it's a similar thing of say, watching a document like this or understanding how, you know, government or businesses work. Not everyone agrees all the time. And when there's a pile of money sitting on the floor, everyone's diving for that pile. That's sort of what we're looking at here. Um, part of what's also happening as well is we talked about in a, in a prior video, how you know, is Donald Trump going to fire a uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell? The basic gist of it is that in Trump's policy, if you want lots and lots of tax cuts and also, you know, you got to find a way to pay for it. One way you could do it is cut, you know, all government regulations and cut all, you know, government watchdog. And that's more if you want to watch the full video that Trump tweeted out or uh, must tweet out about Trump. That's basically what Trump is saying. Trump is saying that, you know, all of these people who want to limit your free speech and label your stuff misinformation or disinformation or Basically, another way to say it is we're going to let companies falsely advertise as much as they want and you can't stop us. Um, and we're going to, you know, gut out any kind of uh, authority figures on companies or whatever and promote whatever messages that, that we want. Um, we, we that This is one way that you pay for all of your tax cuts to your wealthy buddies, right? The other way that you would need to do it is you need to get federal Jerome Powell to get the money printing going or lower interest rates. So it makes it cheaper to, you know, borrow yet more money. 
Um, this is uh, an interesting uh, thing that the Barons did. They were sort of illustrating our uh, national debt, and they did it in a comedic way. Um, and even Powell himself, and it, it, I told you about this before in the, the last video, where that he was saying the path that we're on is, is unsustainable, right? The the amount of money that we're bringing into the government, and the amount of money that we're spending doesn't match. Um, so I guess here we have one third of the world's uh, public debt. That's how they're saying it. Uh, globally, there's 102 trillion uh, public debt, and then we have 35 of it. That's the USA. And um, to give you an idea of the scale, they kind of have a sense of humor about it. And I've noticed that recently in many of the articles that a lot of these, if you read closely, you know, people have a sense of humor, be it like, you know, the government is not going to pay attention if NVIDIA gets overcharged for power. But if grandma pays, you know, a higher power bill, then they'll start to step in. And then it gets back to the point of like, if you're like a Musk and you control the government, you can just say, screw grandma, I'm going to take your power. Um, another way they, they describe the, the national debt, they said here, if you stacked $1 bills, the debt would reach 6.8 million miles or 14 round trips to the moon. That's how big our debt is. 14 round trips to the moon worth. Or talking about stacking $1 bills or 2.5 2 trips around the sun. Uh, another one I thought was kind of an interesting stat. If we spent $1 million per minute, it would take 190 years to pay off the global public debt. Uh, this is nearly 2 point times uh, the human life expectancy. And uh, also shows here, this is the US uh, national debt. Um, Social Security is our, is our top sort of um, cost. And then the national debt is actually uh, over the national defense or Medicare. So it actually is pretty considerable. Um, There's another example of why we need, you know, truth in reporting and truth in the media. I, I understand that the Tesla people don't want that. They just want to say whatever they want. But when you get these kind of reports that say, for example, and this essentially affects your investing and understanding of financial markets that say Tesla sales down in China, right? Year over year, 5.3%, right? It's down. But then Tesla's like, well, you know, I'm just, I don't like those numbers. I'm just going to make numbers up and just make stuff up and then tell my stock promoters to, you know, give out these false numbers. And if there's no government watchdog or anyone watching these things, then they'll get away with it. So I, I, I know I, I speak a lot of frustration in this particular video, but I hope you guys understand the importance of why you'd want to pay attention to whether or not a company can just falsely advertise on their social media posts and whether or not there's any kind of government regulatory agency to basically stop them from doing it. Um, at the moment, Musk and, and Trump are creating an, a world that we live in now. And, and I totally get it. If, if you like these people, you don't understand any of the stuff that I'm talking about anyway. And you just say that I'm a hater and a clown. And then there's that. So I personally think that this thing is a massive bubble and it'll crash eventually. I can't tell you exactly when it's going to happen. But, you know, how long can you build this kind of world and empire based on lies? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Well, let's just hope it doesn't last forever. And that's the world that we live in. So I, I want to hear you guys' thoughts on these topics. I do appreciate you watching. And I'll catch you on the next video.